so this is uh, lecture 6 of uh, this course on uh, analog mos circuit design in the last lecture uh, we have talked about the small signal model of an nmos device and whenever we will be trying to develop any analog mos amplifier then obviously we will encounter nmos as well as pmos so in this particular lecture i am trying to give you some basic understanding regarding the working principle of a pmos device and accordingly i'll also tell you how to find out the small signal model for a pmos device so to start with let me just uh, show you the construction of a pmos device it is exactly the same as you have done for nmos device with little change as far as the doping of the semiconductor is concerned so on the top you have a metal in the form of a polysilicon then beneath that we do have one silicon dioxide layer which acts like an insulator so uh, i am just uh, showing this by means of a hashed portion so up to this there is no such difference and then you have the semiconductor part now as you have seen for an nmos device we have used a p type substrate so here for the construction of PMOS we will use n type substrate so that is the first difference as compared to the NMOS structure so we have NMOS device for which the substrate was P type and for a PMOS device the substrate is N type and then we have uh, the source and the drain regions and the corresponding doping is of p plus for a p type mos and obviously we do have a substrate connection which is having a doping of n plus so this is all about a two dimensional diagram uh, for a PMOS device. This is all about a PMOS device. A PMOS architecture you can consider. Now uh, we can uh, identify the corresponding terminals. So we do have uh, basically four terminals over here as well. So this is known as the gate terminal identified by G this is the source terminal say for example and this one is a drain terminal identified by D and this terminal is the body or bulk So I have marked the four terminals. Now as you have seen for an NMOS device, the value of VGS was greater than zero and it should be greater than the threshold voltage so that the device is turned on. Now for a PMOS device, the situation is just the reverse. So here we consider that the gate to source voltage VGS should be less than zero. So if I consider that, okay, the source terminal is grounded is having a potential of zero volt then the gate potential should be negative unlike the nmos device and the threshold voltage vth that is also negative for a pmos device now when the gate to source voltage is small enough so that the threshold voltage is reached what I mean to say is that for a NMOS device, you have seen that 
the VGS value should be greater than the threshold voltage so that the channel is created. So for the channel creation that was needed. So if I consider the threshold voltage to be say 0.5 volt then the VGS value should be greater than 0.5 volt so that the channel is created. Now here for a PMOS device, so this is the scenario for an NMOS. Now here for a PMOS device, let me assume that the threshold voltage is equal to minus 0.5 volt. So here the threshold should be negative. And I have told you that the gate to source voltage should be small enough so that the threshold is reached. So here the VGS value should be less than VTH. So peculiar scenario as you can obtain over here. So VGS is less than VTH. So if VTH is equal to minus 0.5 volt, then uh, the VGS value might be say, it should be less than minus 0.5 volt. So that the channel is created. Now if this condition is true, if this condition holds good, then the channel will be created. So channel creation will take place if and only if this condition is satisfied. So that is the scenario for PMOS. Or in other words, you can also say that the mod VGS value should be greater than mod VTH. Now this is very much similar what we have seen for an NMOS device that VGS is greater than VTH for the channel creation. Now, since for PMOS device, the gate to source voltage and the threshold voltage, these are negative in nature. So mod VGS should be greater than mod VTH. So if you select a value of VGS to be say minus 0.7 volt, minus 0.9 volt, minus 1 volt or so, under this condition, the channel will be created. And here, what you have is a number of holes beneath this oxide layer. So you have a number of holes. So for NMOS device, you have a number of electrons which are responsible for the current conduction. And here you have a number of holes. And these holes are responsible for the current conduction. Now already I have mentioned this terminal as the source terminal and this terminal as the drain terminal. So what do you mean by source? That means it's a kind of junction, it's a kind of region which will emit something, which will emit the charge carriers. So the charge carriers will leave this junction and ultimately they will be collected over here. Now in order to attract those holes, what I need to do is that I have to make this drain terminal much more negative with respect to the source terminal, unlike NMOS device. For an NMOS device, what we have used is we have used a VDS value should to be greater than zero so that the electrons are attracted from source to drain. So in order to attract holes, from source to drain, I need to do the opposite thing. That means here, the VDS, the drain to source voltage, should be less than zero. So that the holes are attracted towards the drain end and the holes will flow in this direction from source to drain. And you know that as far as our convention is concerned, the direction of the movement of hole is exactly the same as the direction of the current flow. Therefore, for a PMOS device, the current will flow from the source to the drain, unlike an NMOS device. For an NMOS device, you have seen that the current is flowing from the drain terminal to the source terminal, the positive current I'm talking about. So here, the current will flow from the source terminal to the drain terminal. So as far as the symbol of the device is concerned, that is also reflected. So once again, you have these three terminals known as source, drain and gate. So this is the gate terminal. This to be the drain terminal and this to be the source terminal. Now for an NMOS device, we have associated one arrow with the source terminal in order to distinguish it from the drain terminal. Here also, we will do the same thing 
but here since the current flows from the source to the drain so the direction of this arrow will be inwards like this and this is nothing but the PMOS in symbolic form. Obviously we do have the another terminal the fourth terminal which is nothing but the bulk or body which we normally represent by means of a dotted line like this. Now as far as the equation of the current is concerned once again we do have the same expression. So if I just uh, go to the next slide then I can uh, write down the expression for the current. So the current expression is given by half. So instead of having mu n over here we should have mu p because here the charge carriers are the holes. So therefore the mobility of the charge carriers are nothing but the mobility of the holes. So half mu p c ox w by l into vgs minus vth whole square and if you would like to include the factor the correction factor for channel length modulation then 1 plus lambda vds like this. Remember here all these voltages get to source voltage threshold voltage and the drain to source voltage here it is negative. Now for an NMOS device what we have seen is let me just consider or let me just uh, show you the NMOS and the PMOS device side by side. So this is NMOS you have a gate drain and source and here for PMOS those three terminals source gate and drain. Now we have noticed that for an NMOS device if VGS minus VTH is less than or equal to VDS or I should use the term only less than not equal to because equal to stands for the age of saturation region saturation and the triad region. Now if this condition holds good then the device is in saturation. What does it mean? It implies VGS minus VDS is less than threshold on threshold. Now that can be simplified to be that can be further simplified to be VG minus VD should be less than threshold voltage. So that NMOS is in saturation. In order to ensure that the NMOS is in saturation region this condition must be satisfied. That means the gate potential the absolute value of the gate potential and the absolute value of the drain potential. So if you take the difference between these two then the difference between these two quantities should be less than the threshold voltage. So for example if I select the VTH to be say 0.5 volt and VG to be say 1.2 volt then from that we understand that the value of VD is greater than 0.7 volt greater than or equal to 0.7 volt or it is better to write greater than 0.7 volt. Now if it is greater than 0.7 volt then you can find out what is the difference. Then the difference is always less than one threshold that is 0.5 volt. So that is the scenario what you have got for an NMOS device. Now for a PMOS device the situation is little bit different. Here what we have is for a PMOS device to be in saturation if the source terminal is grounded for an NMOS device we have seen that gate and drain both of them are having some positive potential. So for a PMOS device the situation is just reversed keeping the source terminal at ground here the both the gate and the drain terminal should be at negative potential. Now in order to ensure that the device is in saturation then instead of having VG minus VD less than VTH what we have is VD minus VG should be less than the modulus of VTH. Now if this condition is satisfied then you can say that 
the device is in saturation. Let us uh, uh, consider VTH to be say minus 0.5 volt and let us consider that the VG value to be say minus 1.2 volt. So here the VD value should be less than minus 0 0.7 volt. So you can select a value to be say minus 0.9 volt. So minus 0.9 here and minus 1.2 here. So accordingly, uh, you have uh, the difference to be So let us consider VD to be minus 0.9 volt and VG is equal to minus 1.2 volt. So therefore, the difference is 0 0.3 volt and it is well below the modulus of one threshold. So accordingly, we can say that the device is in saturation. So that is the basic difference between this operation of NMOS device and the PMOS device. Now uh, let me just uh, go to the next slide to uh, show you the small signal model of uh, this device. So already we know that since uh, we are talking about a MOS device, obviously we will be having uh, three different terminals namely gate, source and drain. So let me consider these are the three terminals. So this one is a gate terminal, this one is source and here you have the drain terminal. And nothing is there in between the gate and source which is the property of any MOS device. So obviously this difference we can identify by a VGS with this side more positive with respect to this side. So I may consider this to be VGS. So source is at a higher potential as compared to gate. So that VGS is negative here. And between drain to source, what you have? You have a current source. But this time the direction of the current, as I have already mentioned, the direction of the current must be from must be directed from the source terminal to the drain terminal. So the current will flow in this direction with a magnitude equal to gm times vgs. And if you'd like to include the effect of the channel length modulation, then obviously you should have a resistance R0 in parallel with this current source and whose value is equal to 1 upon lambda it. Now that is the small signal model of a typical PMOS device. Now we can uh, what we can do is we can also uh, simplify this small signal model so that it look almost similar just like an NMOS device. So we do certain change over here. Let me put VGS to be equal to say some minus V1. Then what we have is we do have these three terminals. So this is the source end. This one is the gate end. This one is the drain end. And since VGS is equal to minus V1, so between these two terminals, gate and source, we have V1 with this side positive, this side negative. 
and then what you have you have this current source in between the drain and source now uh, let me just uh, draw this current source in isolation suppose we have a current source between these two points suppose this is point a this is point b and this current source the value of this current source is equal to gm times vgs now this is exactly equivalent if i substitute the value of vgs by v1 that means gm times minus v1 or minus gm times v1 and that is exactly equivalent to what we have a current source between these two terminal a and b with a magnitude equal to gm times v1 with the opposite direction just like this so now since these three are identical in nature so what i can do is i can now show the direction of the current source from directed from drain to source and this one is gm times v1 and you have a resistance connected between the drain to source in order to identify the effect of the channel length modulation now if you just compare this one with the small signal model of nmos device you see that this is exactly the same what we have got for an nmos device we have a voltage difference between gate to source of an amplitude v1 a current source of amplitude gm times v1 and the direction of the current source is from drain to source and we have a resistance connected between drain to source which is nothing but the output resistance as far as the channel and modulation is concerned so how to distinguish so given two models like this everything being the same then how can you distinguish the small signal model of nmos with that of pmos the simple answer is that everything being the same for an nmos device for an nmos device we have for nmos we have v1 this v1 this value should be greater than 0 in fact this value should be greater than the threshold voltage otherwise the device is not turned on and we don't have uh, this small signal model however for pmos device for pmos device the value of v1 is less than 0 so depending upon the value of v1 with this terminal much more positive gate is much more positive with respect to source you can segregate or you can differentiate nmos from pmos so this is all about the small signal model of a pmos device and based on the small signal model of this pmos device and that of nmos that we have discussed in the last class we will continue our discussion in designing several mos amplifier circuits involving nmos as well as pmos